Hello there, Bio 50. So we're going to be covering chapter 20 on the urinary or the renal system. It could be called either. So what are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about the large uh, gross anatomy of the renal system, the major organs, and then we are going to be talking about some of the microanatomy. So let's start with where are the kidneys, which are the first part of the renal system. So the kidneys are located kind of up high in the abdominal cavity. They're located behind the liver, so that's why we have this big, kind of like this outline of the liver. I'm going to get some color going here. Um, the kidneys are uh, associated with, remember the adrenals? The adrenals uh, sit on top of the kidneys. They look like little hats. The kidneys themselves are plumbed with blood through um, the renal artery. So the renal artery brings blood into the kidneys and the renal uh, vein, sorry, drains blood out of the kidneys. So there are two kidneys, a right and a left kidney, and they're both supplied with blood by the renal artery and blood is removed via the renal vein. We will be getting into the ureters here later on in the lecture. Um, the renal artery is fed through uh, the abdominal aorta, which is the large blood vessel going down. Uh, it lies anterior to the spinal column. And then the, um, the large, basically, blood vessel draining is going to be uh, taking blood back to the heart uh, from lower organs in addition to, um, oh, well, obviously the kidneys, but that's the inferior vena cava. So the kidneys themselves are, uh, like I said, they sit kind of far back in the abdominal cavity. We call it retroperitoneal, and the left kidney sits slightly higher than the right in most people. If you look at uh, the um, spinal column, you'll see that the kidneys um, are associated with the 11th and the 12th ribs, and the spinous processes from L1 to L4, so lumbar 1 to lumbar 4. So here's the spinous process. Lumbar 4 is all the way down here, but here's lumbar 1, lumbar 2, and basically the kidneys cut off. Actually, they don't cut off and go all the way down to lumbar 4. They're basically above uh, lumbar 1 and extending down between lumbar 2 and 3. Oops, sorry, forgot a couple more things. So the ureters drain down into the urinary bladder, and the urinary bladder then drains out into, uh, out of the body through the urethra. We are not going to necessarily uh, talk about the iliac artery and vein, so don't worry about that. The things we're going to be focusing on are going to be, obviously, the renal vein, the renal artery, the left kidney, and, of course, the right kidney, because most people have two. The ureters, there's a left and right uh, ureter. And then... Uh, the urinary bladder and, oops, I'm sorry, I just relocated my little box here, the urinary bladder and, of course, the urethra. Sorry, my box moved. Okay, so the kidneys. Like I said, they are located kind of uh, posterior in the body. We call that retroperitoneally, behind the peritoneum, which is that uh, tissue covering the uh, digestive system. So they're under the back muscles behind the peritoneum, which is retro, okay, that means behind, retroperitoneally, above the waistline. The right kidney is usually a little lower than the left. We just saw that. And the kidney itself, when you cut it in half, uh, is kind of that bean-shaped organ. So when we cut it, not this way, but when we cut it, uh, coronally through the field, we will see that the kidney is made up of the renal cortex, the outer layer of the kidney, the renal medulla, which is an inner portion. Now, one of the things to bear in mind as you go through anatomy in higher anatomy courses and in physiology is that cortex actually means, again, kind of a columnar structure. Cortex usually is outside of a medulla, and the medulla is usually kind of a scramble, not a scramble, but a loose aggregation of cells. So cortex literally means like cortical columnar, and medulla means like a loose aggregation of cells. So when you have a cortex, not all the time, but most of the times in the body, you will find a medulla. Now, the renal pyramids are triangular uh, organizations of cells within the medulla. So let's say you have all these little sets of cells in the medulla. You have separations, and some of them look like little triangles. And I'm sorry, these aren't perfect circles for my cells. 
The renal papilla are the, the narrowest regions of our little triangle. So again, this would be a renal pyramid. This would be a renal pyramid within the medulla. And then these would be renal columns. Don't worry about their structure right now, okay? The renal pelvis is a region between, um, by the ureters, which we'll look at, and it lies in, deep inside of the kidney. And then the renal calyces divide the renal pel pelvis. Aha, here we go. This is where uh, we have both a, an artist rendition and an actual cross section through a, a kidney, a preserved kidney. So the renal uh, capsule is just a fibrous connective tissue that is, you know, kind of holds the kidney together. The renal cortex is, again, like I said, this columnar organization. I think you can see that this looks like columns, and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that later. The uh, renal medulla are these regions right in here. And the renal medulla, like I said, was is separated into these renal pyramids, which you can see a lot more clearly in this artist's rendition. The separating the renal pyramids are the renal columns. And the columns themselves also look somewhat, somewhat uh, cortical. The renal colon, columns contain with them blood within them blood vessels. And you could see this in the artist rendition here in the drawing, but also you can see it in the picture of preserved tissue. Each one of these is a blood vessel. We'll get to that later. The renal sinus are these regions right here, kind of spaces, just spaces, uh, associated with or close to renal calyces. Renal calyx is a region where uh, urine is starting to drain into these minor calyces, drain into a major calyx, which then drains into the renal pelvis and drains out through a ureter. So the minor calyces are where urine is basically being drained from the medulla and the cortical nephrons, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, it's draining formed urine. Within the uh, kidney, there's a small amount of fat cushioning and so forth. Um, we already looked at the pyramids here, but here's another region of a renal pyramid, uh, medulla pyramid, you know, same place. And then the helium here is one spot uh, where you have this kind of inward budding of the kidney where the ureter is uh, exiting out through the kidney. Okay, so what do each of these things do? Forget that chapter 19 was in, is in my ver version of the book. You have chap you have uh, 20 in your version of the book. So when we look at the microscopic structure of the kidney, the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So functional unit. The functional unit is the thing that does the work in the organ. Okay, the your uh, the nephrons are they are microscopic they're difficult to see in a just a, a gross preparation like we were just looking at and the nephrons consist of several sections the first one is going to be the renal corpuscle the renal corpuscle also is called bowman's corpuscle because in the past a guy named bowman discovered it so you'll find that sometimes when we are studying anatomy and physiology sometimes too you'll see that certain parts of the body have a person's name and the person's name is the name of the person that discovered and described uh, that part of the body and when I say described it what they did was they published a research article on that part of the body um, these days we don't so much do that anymore we don't you know there's no Albano's part of the body right um, however having said that instead of that uh, when I was in graduate school, I did publish articles and I did describe new things. Those descriptors have anatomical terms describing them, not my name. So we don't do that anymore. The convention these days is to use anatomical terminology rather than our personal name to identify a structure. So the renal corpuscle is also Bowman's capsule. Uh, Bowman's capsule is, or the renal corpuscle, is cup-shaped at the top, and I'll show you a picture of that, and that cup is going to hold blood vessels and capillaries. The glomerulus consists of those capillaries surrounded by the actual capsule itself. It's so much easier to look at the picture. We'll get to that in a minute. There are two types of nephrons, the cortical nephrons, 
all right? 85% of all nephrons are cortical, and the rest are juxtamedullary nephrons. These guys are really important for making super concentrated urine, all right? So we don't need as many of these because they really do a, an excellent job of getting rid of waste. The cortical nephrons are getting rid of extra water in our system, which a lot of times if you're drinking water adequately, you have quite a bit of. So here's a picture of the two different types of nephrons in um, the kidney. And what we're doing is we're looking at the uh, medulla portion. Okay, there are two portions. Here are Here's one cortical nephron. Oops, and I don't want to draw that as a triangle. That suggests something. The medulla is triangular shape. Remember, they were renal pyramids. And in the cortex up here, the cortical nephrons have this little loop that extends down called the lupa henle, which we'll get to in a minute. And they don't extend down very far. They just go kind of superficially down into the medulla. The juxtamedullary nephrons send a loop of henle way deep down into the medulla. And this is one of the reasons why they're able to make super concentrated urine. So these guys concentrated urine. These guys, the cortical nephrons, make dilute urine. We'll be going into more detail in a minute, but let's just look at the, the, the pieces. The glomerulus, I'm going to get rid of this sad looking arrow. Oops, sorry about that. Let me get my eraser going. I have to get colored ink first. Let me get my eraser going. Ah, my pen's not behaving. So, ah, last. Sorry, let's go back. So, um, the outside is Bowman's capsule right here, the cup. Inside of the cup is the glomerulus. The whole thing together is the renal corpuscle. So, the renal corpuscle is both Bowman's capsule, number one, and the glomerulus. All right, let's do this, number one and number two, all right? Associated with that is what we call, or right past that, so the direction of urine flow is going to be in this direction here. Urine's going to flow into the proximal convoluted tubule. It'll then flow down through the descending loop of Henle, where things happen. You'll learn more about that in physiology, and we'll talk about it a little bit here. Then the urine flows, so it goes down through here. Then the urine, or the filtrate, flows up through the ascending loop of Henle into the distal convoluted tubule and eventually out a collecting duct and down into one of the renal calyces. The same thing happens over here in a cortical nephron. So remember, this is a juxtamedullary nef nephron, juxta for uh, juxtaposed next to the medulla, juxtamedullary nephron. Over here, this cortical nephron only dips down uh, pretty superficially, like I said, into the medullary portion of the uh, renal uh, structure, and it forms less concentrated urine. So let's look at the glomerulus real quick. Remember, the glomerulus consists of, or I should say the, the renal corpuscle, consists of the actual glomerulus. The glomerulus are the blood vessels, and the Bowman's capsule outside is that cup-shaped structure. So the glomerulus, blood vessels, or capillaries, Bowman's capsule is the cup. Okay, I said it kind of backwards there a minute ago. So what happens is uh, plasma exits through the glomerulus and drains out into Bowman's capsule, where then it enters the proximal convoluted tubule. So inside of the kidneys, you'll see a whole lot of these little capillary beds that are draining plasma out into the proximal convoluted tubule. The good thing about this is that lots of fluid can escape. Lots of salts can escape. Other compounds can escape as well. Proteins, not so much. If protein gets in here, that means something uh, don't worry about that right now. Red blood cells should not be escaping into the proximal convoluted tubule, though. If red blood cells do escape into there, that's not a good thing. So what we're looking at here is a schematic showing the glomerulus associated with Bowman's capsule and leading out into the proximal convoluted tubule. We'll start the next uh, figure or the next slide right here uh, in the next uh, part of the lecture.